This is going to be a short video on creating a drawing from an already created model. I can load the model that I was thinking of using in my browser tree. I'm going to take this component here and turn it into a drawing. I can do that by right clicking my component and create drawing. I'm going to create a new drawing from the component selected, and this is in inches. I'm also going to make this an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper to make this easier. Fusion now created a whole new document and a sheet, and it's asking us to place our base view. Here we have the option of changing what angle or which view that we're going to place what style, so if we just want the edges, if we want shaded, I'm going to choose visible and hidden edges, and also with scale. So if we want one-to-one, -one, we can see it's a little bit larger. I'm going to place a one-to-two scale for now, and just click on our sheet. Oh, hit OK, and now I have an edge style with hidden edges. That's what these holes are. I'd like to also create a top view of this, so I'm going to click the parent view, and then I automatically get a projected view. If I wanted a side view, I just move my mouse over, but I only want this top view. I'll click, and when I'm done, I'll hit escape. Now these two coincide together. They will always be lined up. If I'd like to create a separate drawing, I can create a new base view here up at the top. And I can change now the scaling of this differently. So I'm going to make this 1 to 3. And I'm going to make this one shaded. And I want this one to be northeast isometric. And I'm going to place that in the top corner. I'll hit OK. If you notice, I have two components in this particular view. You can see this one was unchecked. I'm going to do the same thing here to make sure that my actual component is showing. You can add a new sheet if you wanted to make different components for different views. So I could add a sheet real quick, add a base view, select the same style, hit OK, and then do the opposite, flip my view. So now I have the other component. For now, I'm going to be working in this original component. Once I have my two views, it's very easy to start dimensioning our part. I'm going to create center lines before I start dimensioning, so I have something to grab onto when I'm able to dimension my part. Just click the edge of the circles, and you should get good center marks. To properly dimension, just use the D key. Or if you have specific dimensions like a radius or a diameter, you can use the drop down menu here. I'm mostly going to use the D key, and I'll get all the major dimensions this radius, this diameter, this radius. Could get this radius or that distance. I will get that thickness. I can go center to center. I can also get, let's say the the distance of here to here. And the distance uh, of there to there should be one, a radius of one. I can select this. Get my diameter there. And for now, I'll, I'll just put that in as a radius as well. That should fully dimension my part. 
and I have a shaded view up top. As for the title blocks, we can manually edit the templates by double clicking and we can call this one maybe CAD 151. We can call this bracket design and child parents. So we get all kinds of uh, availabilities towards this. We know the scale is based off of that initial parent drawing. It doesn't know the scale of this. If I decide to change the scale, I need to manually change the sheet. It puts this in for the first parent view. So just keep that in mind. As you add sheets, you will get sheet one of one and sheet one of two. If you decide to delete that sheet, it will update. At this point, you're safe to export to a PDF and save and just use as an unedited PDF. If there's other things that you wish to add, like cutting away a detailed view. I'd like to know a little bit more about this particular hole. What I can do is select that center mark and where I want to cut away. And now where that's highlighted, that's going to be this. And let's just say I hit OK. So now I have a section scale one to one, detail A, and that's this cutaway here, this A. And you can adjust that as you need. So I'm going to undo that. The next important piece is that you can rotate and move tools and delete. You can also create center lines. Again, more dimensions. If we'd like, we can add text or a leader. So I could say here, you know, quarter 28 volt. And that will place wherever you need it to. And you can change your font. and your height of your font. If you need to adjust. That looks good. You can also add uh, different features like symbols and things and connect those to other areas. You can insert an image and you can create your own tables. So let's just say I wanted to create a table off of this drawing. I can then place that table here and it gives me some details about that part. If you need to, you can create a balloon. So it knows that's item one. And we have a couple other styles. This looks pretty good so far. The last thing that we need to know about the drawings is that they update with our actual parts. So if I decide to go back into this particular drawing, take this round bracket and suppress that feature and unsuppress this feature, as soon as I save, my drawing comes up with a warning. At the top, it's unlinked. If we click this, it will now link them and it will update my drawing. If you notice, I don't have a radius anymore because now I have a square bracket. So that's something that needs to be reassociated, but it's pretty tricky to do like this. I generally 
delete those and redimension. Because that's easier for me rather than having to reassociate. The rest of the dimensions should be the same. Again, if I go back and change that, as soon as I save, it's going to update and my parts will refresh. And again, it's asking me to reassociate and There we go. Now I can use the linear dimension because I pulled off the two corners. Everything is good. Just make sure you double check these associations as you update your parts and make sure your drawings match.